Hello everyone and welcome back to the Top of the Key. Today we're going to jump into the Aces history books and shine a spotlight on some of the most impressive rookie seasons in franchise history. Joining me once again are the broadcast voices of the Aces, Carolyn Peck and Krista Blunt. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be back. Glad to have you two here. Last week, we looked at the impact rookies in the WBA for 2024, but the Aces have had some impressive first-year players over the years. Carolyn and Krista, how did you come up with your top rookie seasons in franchise history? Well, first you had to look at when the league first started, everybody was considered a rookie, rookie whether you came from overseas or whatnot. But now what we're going to look at today are those players coming right out of college. Yeah, so we don't want to take anything away from players like Elena Baranova, who was an incredible player for many years that came in first for Utah. But you also had Natalie Williams, players that came over also from the ABL. Uh, you know, Natalie Williams, an all-star, a first-teamer in the WNBA. Um, and then Margot Dedek, you know, a number one pick to, to the Utah Stars, but again, came in from overseas. But at 7 2, she was a game changer. I mean, she was an eight time blocks leader mm. in the league. She was impressive. Now, we're only focused on their rookie years, uh, not their careers. So there's no Jackie Young and no Kelsey Plum. But let's start this list and we'll go in chronological order. So let's start in 1997 with Wendy Palmer. Went way back to <laughs> Wendy Palmer coming out of the University of Virginia. This was a stretch for a player, post player. And that's when post players started to really extend outside the paint. She could shoot the three, though still bring the physicality inside and that's why she had a major impact when she came in the league. Yeah, she did. A player that I think a lot of people were deceived by her abilities, both inside and out. And in 2001, LSU, great standout guard in Marie Ferdinand Harris. Man, Nikki, you said it, standout. Because when she hit the floor, she just stood out. She was so quick. I mean, just gazelle-like. The athleticism and her defense created so much of their offense. Just blazing speed and just an incredible player. I loved watching her play. Yeah, nobody could catch Marie Ferdinand Harris in transition, that's for sure. And in 2006, when Baylor won a national championship, we've got to talk about Sophia Young Malcolm. Sophia Young Malcolm, the numbers that she put up, 12 points a game, 7.6 rebounds a game, and she was an undersized post player. I mean, you're battling with players that have tremendous size inside, but she used her quickness and finesse to be able to be so dominant in the WNBA in her first year. And I don't think there were really any teams that had a matchup for her. Mm -mm. She was one of those players that really started to change the look of how the, the league was going to be and how it was going to be played. When you talk about dominance in the paint, 2011, we've got to talk about Danielle Adams leading Texas A&M to a national championship. Yeah, she's a player that I don't think anybody knew what to do with Danielle <laughs> Adams, right? I mean, she's this big physical presence that could be a post player for you, but she had incredible hands, a beautiful passer. Um, she could extend it out and shoot it. Uh, just a really tough matchup. Well, that three-point shot that she had outside, I mean, she get down the floor in transition ahead of everybody else. That was money. And one of the best shooters in the WBA currently, we got to talk about Kayla McBride coming out in 2014. Kayla McBride brought to the game from Notre Dame what she developed in college. She used to watch videos of Michael Jordan. Her mid-range game, I mean, just pure, deadly. Off the dribble, pull up, gather, finish, man. And she's still doing that today. Yeah, still playing, but also capable of going inside. I mean, she's talking about a physical guard as well. And so it's a great combination guard. And Connecticut always does a great job of producing some of the best players. And we got to talk about Mariah Jefferson in 2016 coming out as a point guard. And I think a lot of people question Mo Jeff. I think she, you know, could she be big enough? Would she be able to, to last in the league? She's still playing. She's still an impact player. Uh, she brings the experience. She's savvy. She's still got quickness. I mean, she's got some miles on her, but I'm telling you, this player is still getting it done. Well, she came out of college. She received the Don Staley Award, Point Guard Award, because of the ability that she had to create and push the pace. And I really don't see that she's lost a step still today in the league. Well, you got to talk about Don Staley. You got to then talk about Asia Wilson of the Las Vegas Aces, 2018 number one overall draft pick. And when she came into the league, Asia Wilson said, let me introduce myself with 20, almost 21 points a game. 
eight rebounds a game, and that's before she really developed that three-point shot that she's got right now. The tenacity that she has on the floor, but leadership has always been a characteristic of Asia Wilson. I love her communication on the floor. I think that's a part of her game that's gotten better and better. And I'm with you at times, you know, the first season uh, for her coming in had the three-point shot going. Last year, not as much. But, you know, she is the kind of player, whatever this team needs, that's what I'm going to give them. And, boy, she's always giving them D. She's a shot block and machine. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, Krista and Carolyn, for taking us on a trip through the history books today.